In today's video, we're going to see two of the snowiest model runs of the entire winter so far. Both the European model and GFS model show massive snowfall events along the eastern United States, even the east coast for a lot of the mid-Atlantic and northeast. So let's not waste any time. Let's just dive straight into it and take a look first off at this European model run. Now, it's no secret, it's very, very warm. It got above 70 here in Virginia today, so it's absolutely beautiful. But next week and beyond is going to be very, very different. Very opposite, matter of fact. We're going to see Arctic air take over, and we're going to drop 30, 40, or 50 degrees compared to what we're seeing this week all the way to next week. Very, very different outlook. So let's take a look at things, and for the day today, we actually have a lot of thunderstorm activity ongoing throughout the deep south and southeastern United States. And this is fairly typical when we see an Arctic air mass trying to intrude on a much warmer, more humid air mass, and we're going to see that take place over the course of the weekend. Let's see what happens by the time we're taking a look at tomorrow afternoon, and again, it's pretty stagnant. We see a lot of this thunderstorm activity still setting over the southeast and mid-Atlantic states here, where thunderstorms cannot be ruled out, but at the very least, we're going to see some much-needed precipitation. Now, we can tell there is Arctic air swinging in to the north-central United States. We already have snowfall throughout the upper Midwest and Great Lakes here. As soon as tomorrow on Saturday the 10th, we do see a lot of high pressure and warmth set up over the western United States, and we call this a positive PNA. This is actually the cause for this Arctic air swinging into the east. And for Sunday here on the 11th, we see that Arctic air arrive for the eastern United States, where we could tell we have a full-blown ridge in the west trough in the east. And it's a shame we don't have a nor'easter set up right here primed to move straight up this because this would put the east coast in a huge position for snowfall. Rest assured, we will see setups like that regardless, just not this soon for the 11th. As time goes on, we see that Arctic blast kind of comes to an end, and we get a second one moving in for Tuesday the 13th into Wednesday the 14th. And this is when things look primed for massive snowfall in the east. We have tons of moisture sitting over the Gulf and over the southeast here. We have Arctic air on the move in, and both models are going to show this actually connecting and again causing massive east coast snow events. So let's see what happens for Thursday here on the 16th. And we do get some low pressure offshore, but you can tell this is leading to minor snowfall along this eastern area for the mid-Atlantic and northeast. It's very, very close to hitting. And you can't even rule this out for this 15th through 16th time frame. That is still an area to watch because we have a ton of low pressure, just a little bit too far to the east. But that's a tweak that can definitely occur considering this is still six or seven days out. As we advance this, Towards Saturday here on the 17th, we can see this Arctic air is the most intense that it is at any point in the model run, and that's because this warmth and high pressure out west is the most intense that it is uh, at any point in the model run. This is stretching way, way, way up to the north here in the west, and this is causing this colder air to react and actually force that air much further to the south. So we see some snowfall occurring here for Texas. Louisiana maybe take it with a grain of salt it's obviously highly unusual and it is lighter there but definitely goes to show just how snowy things are and now we can see some low pressure developing near the Florida Panhandle even some snowfall developing for the lower Appalachian Mountain Range this is by Sunday morning January 18th as we advance this a little bit further we see this low essentially ricochet straight up the east coast and puts Virginia northward all the way through the mid-Atlantic and into New England in prime position for a heavy snowfall event right around the 18th, 19th. This is exactly what I've been telling you guys. It's crazy to see these models just reacting almost to exactly what I've been saying, but we've seen these models showing things that are a little bit too disconnected, and I told you guys, I mean, we are so close to getting that connection that would lead to massive snowfall. And overnight from yesterday to today, we have seen that connection take place. We have to track this stuff. It's still about 10 days out, but there is a lot of potential during this time frame. And that moves up into New England, maybe even a, a really massive snowfall event for them as that low gets down to 984 and even into the 960s there. Maybe even a blizzard in New England on this model run. We do see the Arctic air relax before entering back into our pattern here, even getting another New England snowfall event just after the 20th, as we still have a ridge in the west, trough in the east dominant pattern here. The GFS model is going to be equally, if not exceedingly exciting, 
as we get past this warm period we can see again the arctic air moves in next week and right around the 15th 16th this model doesn't say we don't get anything it actually shows a far southeastern snowfall event for the carolinas and up into virginia again i've told you guys that this model tends to be a little bit too far to the southeast and it actually trends northwestward with time and we've actually seen a slow tick to the northwest on this model run as heavy snowfall continues for the Carolinas into Virginia, but I would suspect that this might be located a lot further to the northwest, putting these folks kind of in line to potentially be threatened by this system. There's, again, still six or seven days until this thing uh, would be occurring, so definitely plenty of time for some changes like that to occur. And typically on the GFS model, we do see that northwest movement over time, like I mentioned. We do also get that 18th, 19th system. Very, very similar setup low just offshore. We see from North Carolina all the way up to Maine along the eastern seaboard, heavy snowfall occurring. So cities like D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York City, up into Boston and the rest of southern New England getting a massive nor'easter snowstorm here for the 18th, 19th. So that is the one signal that we actually see on both of these model runs. And then they both have a lot of potential around the 15th, 16th that needs to be watched, but we are getting closer, so we do need to see some trends in the right direction relatively soon. As we advance past this, again, that one also turns into a massive New England snow system on this model. We actually don't end the snow there. We do enter into a very brief warmer pattern here in the east, especially the southeast after the 20th. As a low develops over the Midwest, this causes a warm front which pulls that warmth and humidity northward. Again, very briefly, this leads to snowfall for the Midwest, upper Midwest, into the Great Lakes. And as we advance past that, we actually get another Arctic blast here. We end up with very, very cold air to end the model run off. Even lake effect snowfall going crazy there over the Great Lakes in northeast just around the 25th, which of course is extremely far out, but the best thing you can see on the models here is a really cold pattern in the long range, and they do both suggest that at this point. Looking at the total precipitation here on our European model run, we can see an extremely dry west, and that is due to the high pressure that's just going to sit tight over these areas and really deflect all of the storms either over top or underneath. And it's this underneath motion that gives us that nor'easter look as a lot of our moisture is swinging from the Gulf northward off the East Coast because again, this trough is causing the wind to move kind of horseshoe around the deep south like that. So this is kind of the perfect setup for this type of storm track. Looking at the total snowfall on your European model run, I don't think anybody in the Midwest or the Mid-Atlantic or Northeast or Great Lakes here would have too many complaints. Maybe some folks here in the Ohio Valley where they just kind of get caught in between, but for the upper Midwest, Great Lakes, and then areas along the eastern states, this is an extremely snowy look, especially considering uh, just a few days ago we had no real vision of any favorable periods for snow. We've seen this evolve into something a lot more interesting very rapidly, and I do think that we are looking to most likely enter into a very snowy period here. The GFS model's total snowfall is a little bit more favorable for areas in the southeast, obviously, which again, I do expect that to trend northward, but you can't guarantee it. So for now, the GFS model does show Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina getting a ton of snowfall for their standards, especially North Carolina and Virginia here, where maybe 10 inches plus is on uh, this GFS model here. And then we do see the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast also cashing in on snowfall. Again, the upper Midwest and Great Lakes getting a ton as well here on this model. So both of these would be very favorable for a lot of these major areas uh, to see snowfall in the upcoming pattern. And of course, we've been anticipating the Arctic air for over a week now uh, for these particular time periods. But the biggest, biggest, biggest change has been a significant trend in a snowier direction. Of course, like always, I will keep you guys up to date with all of these things. So be sure to subscribe. We upload every single day and we're going to just be tracking this every day. Looking at the model trends, I'll keep you guys up to date with what both of these are showing as we draw closer and closer to some of these storm signals. So be sure to subscribe. Uh, you can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we do upload. And you can even like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.